We are on page 63, guys. If you have a question, it's on the board. Today we are moving on from fractional operations to area. The reason we did fractional operations first was because you will be using them in some of our area. Not all of them have whole number size. Does that make sense? Okay, so before we move into the meat of the lesson, I want you to write three different numeric expressions to describe the total area of the rectangle shown. So let's discuss first. What is the difference between an expression and an equation? How do I know the difference? Which one has it? An equation has an equal sign and an answer. An expression does not. So that means you are simply writing a problem to represent how you would find the area of this rectangle. Does that make sense? All right, you have about two minutes to do that. Go for it. You're only writing three problems. All right, who can tell me one problem I can use to find the area of this rectangle? Seven times eleven, who can tell me another one? Eleven times seven, who can tell me another one? Yes, we can use the distributive property. We can break 11 into pieces. Remember we did that a few weeks ago where we broke them into pieces that were easier to multiply. Everybody remember that? Yep. I can also write 77 because that represents 77 times 1. Make sense? Good. Let's turn the page. Sorry, Max. Okay, this one, we're going to talk real quickly. When we are looking at well, when we're talking about figures in mathematics, we have a whole series that we go through to name it according to the attributes that best describe what the figure is. So, like, for all of these, I can call all of these polygons. But that really doesn't tell you much, does it? No. So I try to use the most specific name for the figure that I can to give you an, a visualization of what exactly it looks like. So if I start on this first one, the one that's in kind of light blue, what would we call that shape? A rectangle. Why wouldn't I call it a square? Because the sides aren't even. So what are the attributes? In other words, what, what about that shape makes it a rectangle? Yeah. No, that gives me the measurement. But what about that shape makes it a rectangle? Keith? Okay, so the size, I'm going to use that last. So you're right, the sides aren't equal. But there's two other characteristics to it that are really important. Yeah. Okay, so it's not equal. The, the opposing sides are parallel. That's a really important part. And I'm going to put down what you guys said, and we put that together. Opposing sides are parallel and equal to each other. And I'm going to say equal, but not the same. Because this is the same length as that, but it is not the same as this. Make sense? However, uh, this side is the same as this side. The opposing sides are parallel, and they're equal to each other, but the four sides are not equal to each other. There's one other really important thing that makes it a rectangle. You good? Good. All right angle. Okay. So because of that, we know that the best terminology for this is rectangle. Because 
all right angles. The opposing sides are parallel, but not an equal, but not all equal to each other. Okay, what about our orange shape? What is that called? Okay. Triangle. Why? What makes that a triangle? Actually, can anybody else be a little more specific? Right triangle. Okay. So what does it have to do to make this a right triangle? Um, right. Has one right angle. What else about the triangle? But when we're talking about um, shapes, we actually talk more about the sides than we do the corners. Okay, what about our pinkish shape? What do we call that one? Uh, parallelogram. Could that be a rhombus? Rhombus has all sides are the same. This one. Could be stretched as a diamond, but the diamond and the top bottoms are the same. This one's not. You see that this these these sides are different shapes. They're different sizes, different Okay, so what else makes this a parallelogram? Good. Good. Opposing sides are parallel. Something else about the opposing sides. Yeah. No. What else do we know about the opposing sides? You hint their length. Bigger. Length. They're equal. Are parallel and equal. But not all. But not the same. And that is the difference between a parallelogram and a rhombus. In a rhombus, all four sides are the same length. In a parallelogram, the sides are the same as each other, but they're not all the same. Okay? There's one other really important part in a parallelogram. Rhombus, this line. So in a rhombus, if I were to cut it, this is four, so if I cut it at a height of four, here, this would be a rhombus. Oh. But then my sides are the same. A rhombus is a square without a right angle. Okay? So a rhombus is just a square, but it doesn't have right angles. It should give me a hint when I'm looking for a parallelogram. Alright, well, I have a cute and a cute. But the key is what it doesn't have. It doesn't have right angles. So there is no right angle. Okay. And then we get to our light purplish shape. What do we call that one? Oh, okay. Happy boy, good job. And what is your distinguishing characteristic for a happy boy? Jose? Not necessarily. This side could potentially be equal, but there's more important characteristics that make them count. Okay? Um, one Okay, so you guys should have all of that written down because that is how we distinguish our different shapes. Kind of like a flow chart. You go through the flow chart and you keep going until you can't answer any further that tells you what level that is at. So, for example, on a parallelogram, I would go through and I'd say, does it have four sides? Yes. That makes it a polygon or quadrilateral. Are the opposing sides um, parallel? Yes. Are both sides parallel? Yes. Are there any right angles? No. 
So I got all the way down to where it's parallelogram, but I didn't make it to where it's a rectangle. Because the next step after this is rectangle right now, I have four right angles. Okay? Questions on how we're naming any of these? Okay, so you do need to understand your distinguishing features for each state. Are you good? What about the square? What about the square? A rectangle, and that's one of the interesting things. A square is a form of rectangle, but a rectangle will never be a square. No, if it's only have one set of parallel sides, it's a square. Because when I get the two sets of parallel sides, the both sides are parallel, then it's a parallel again. And then when I get to where if both sides are parallel, but there's also a right triangle, then it's a rectangle. Right. Yeah, right triangle. Or right angle, sorry. So when I get a four sided, opposing sides are parallel and there's right angle, now it's a rectangle. If I get to where all four sides are the same and it's all right angle, then it's a square. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now that we've done that. Each shaded figure has show, shown has an area of exactly 20 square units. Show how I know that. So if I look at it, if I look at this first one, this one would be the easiest because I could literally just count the squares, right? If I counted them, I would see this one goes four across, five tall. So you could count the squares. Parallel means that they go on side way that they'll never touch. Never touch. So if I were to take this line and I extend it forever. Those two lines will never touch in all these all these Okay? And same on this side. If I extend those lines, they are never going to touch. Doesn't matter how long they go. Okay? Not parallel. So why? So I draw this and extend it, draw this and extend it. Now it intersects. So the whole deal on the trapezoid is essentially they're going to touch because they're not parallel. On the other side, though, the other set, those are parallel, so those will never touch. Okay. So that's why we say one set of parallel lines. Side, side. All right, good. Good question, then. Okay. So that one would be easy to see. What about this one? This one, I mean, you kind of count some of the squares that are whole, right? And then. Well, look at this. What if I took this triangle and I flipped it upside down and redo it? What do I have then? A rectangle. How far is this? Or I count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm a rectangle. What would that make? 20. Triangles with half of that. 20. So my area would be 20. Okay. This is more so for If I'm on this one, yeah. she is. If I look at this distance, that's four. And if I go from the bottom to the top of that, I go up one, two, three, four, five. What do you see? 20. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more on that in a second. On this one, this one gets interesting. If I were to, and this one's kind of nice, it's got a good picture. If I cut this piece off and I flip it over and put it in right here, what, what do you see then? A rectangle, no rectangle. Okay, so Jackie, I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Chamber. Actually, you go through that. See, I told you. Look at the narrow.
We are not going to go to actually page 73 to do this. We're going to stay on this page and we're just going to do it with our pencil so we don't take up too much time. But first, let's look at the definition of parallelogram at the top of the page. A parallelogram is a four sided figure with two pairs of parallel sides and opposite sides that are equal in length. Or a highlight, either way. And a rectangle is a special type of parallelogram because they have two sets of parallel sides. Does everybody understand? Yes. Okay. So if we look at the picture of the parallelograms on page 73, would it be easy for us to find the area when some of them cut through the boxes? Like some of them go through the middle of the boxes and don't take up the whole box. Would that be easy to find the area? No. So in order to find the area of a parallelogram, we can change it, but not take away any of the area. We can just rearrange it. So what if I cut off this rectangle and I moved it to this side? What did I make? I now made a rectangle, but did I stop? Did I add or take away any area from our shape? No, it is still the exact same as the parallelogram. I just moved part of it to a different place, and I have four right angles. Yes? All right, so. Uh, who can tell me the formula for finding area of a rectangular, sorry, a rectangle or a parallelogram? Length times width or? Somebody said height. What's the word that goes with height? Not width. Length? Base. Base. Base times height. So we're going to label the base and the height of the parallelogram and the rectangle. So who can tell me where the base of my parallelogram is? Okay, I, I always say it's the bottom as well. Base means bottom, yes? Yeah. That won't always work. Sometimes your shapes are sideways or all kinds of different ways. But normally we say it's the bottom. So what makes the height of the parallelogram. So this would be the height? No. no. The perpendicular side that makes a right angle with the base. So the two lines that make the right angle are our base and our height. Does that make sense? Your base and your height always have to make a right angle. And your height always has to be a straight line from top to bottom. It cannot be a diagonal line. That does not work. It has to be a straight line. Any questions about that? All right, where is the base on my rectangle? The bottom. The bottom. And where is the height of my rectangle? The perpendicular side. And somebody actually uses vocabulary over here. Good job. It is the one that makes the right angle with the base. Any questions? Does everybody know what perpendicular means? It means it makes that right angle, makes a perfect corner. Make sense? All right, so that's how you know which one is the base and which one is the height because they make that right angle. Yes. Yes. All right, let's look at the next page, guys. We are coming around to hand out your doodle notes. What? Oh, sorry guys, I forgot to notice bottom. Turn back to the last page real quick. The right angle symbol indicates that the lines or sides are perpendicular. They always make a perfect corner. I said it, I just didn't highlight it. All right, we are coming around to hand out your doodle notes. Yeah, so it was giving you doodle notes on this. Remember, you can use 
that. Please put your name on it. Then get it somewhere. I have a chance to see you. So we want to talk a little bit about this, but then when we are working with uh, parallelograms and rectangles, the base and height must be where. What was what did we just say? The symbols know where they're going to meet. Corner. So at the right angle. So I know a lot of you guys consider that number is just suddenly magically appear and have meaning. Here's the one thing that makes areas super easy, guys. And they're building into that magic piece. I call it the magic box. So on all of your figures, you're going to have a magic box, right angle marker. Why is that magic? Because when I'm looking at a figure, that is going to tell me what's my base and what's my height. The two lines that touch that magic box are the two that you need to find area. So as long as you can focus in on that right angle marker, this should be a very easy exercise for you. Literally all you're going to need to do is put the, for the numbers into the formula. The key is finding the magic box. Okay? Why do I say that's the key? Because sometimes we have shapes like these. So we have three shapes here inside the circle. I want you to label the base and the height for each of these three quadrilaterals. I'll give you a hint. For some of them, you may need to draw an extra line if you don't have a magic box. Okay? You may work together on the table. You guys have three minutes. You can label the base and height on all three of them. Okay, on number one, that was a little tricky, right? Did you see the magic box? Yeah. Another one. So, on the magic box, you get that perpendicular line. Which one is my base then? Bottom. I would call the bottom. I got a good hand on that one. It's like that's the base, that's the bottom. So now, where is my height? One I just threw in on the side. Okay? So, this is my height here, guys. What do we call this line? Back out of special math report. It comes to area. Now that's not a mistake. It's part of the shape. Part of what makes that a parallelogram. Okay. Now, guys, you're not going to get it. I'll give it to you. It's called irrelevant. It doesn't matter. That is an important line for building the shape of the parallelogram. But when it comes to solving the problem for area, I don't care. So guess what on a test, what the most likely thing you're going to see is? You're going to see that the test is going to send a base of 6. It's going to put a line over here of 5. It's going to have a height of 4. What? I'm going to see three numbers. How many numbers do I need for my formula? Two. Area equals the base times the height. It's 30. So it should be 24. Oh. Six times four. But, but five. So many of you are going to try to get that five in this problem some way. I don't care about the five. If I need perimeter, then I need the five. If I'm finding area, the five is irrelevant. Which two lines are touching the magic box? Five down, please. 
channel number two. I'm going to improvise. Right? Right? Oh, no. Why not? your unit. Karen, I messed this up last time. Put your answer in the box. Box there. The second part to the point Ashley has been making, this is where you get a chance. We're not actually going to get cut it. All we want you to do is uh, show how I would move this little piece here. Turn this into a record. Okay? We got one problem to solve. This one, so you guys about two minutes. 
Guys, I did this one. I apologize. I'm going to go back to the top. This is why I'm supposed to work this way with you guys before we did it. So it gives this rectangle. This rectangle about has a length of 18 inches. And width of 11 inches. What is its area? So one thing I really like to do and highly encourage you to do is I always like to label it right on the, on the picture. Nice thing that you guys all have your own books you can write in them. Please take advantage of that. So in this case, it said the length is 18. So I'm going to call that my height. And I'm going to say that's 18 inches. It says that the width is 11. So I'm going to call that my base of 11 inches. We know that the formula for a rectangle is what? Area equals? Technically, it's length times width. That's why they did length and width. Okay? So, if I use the number they gave me, my base or my length was 11 inches times my height or my um, width, 18 inches. 11 times 18 is going to give me? Good job, Evan. So, for those of you that didn't do that easily, let me try to explain what you probably did. Probably the same way I did. I took 10, 11, I said, okay, well, that's 10 times 18, which is 180. And then I add another 18 to it, 198. <coughs> and here's one of the most important pieces. Because we are dealing with area, I have inches times inches. How do I write that? How do I write that? Inches times inches is? Inches squared. squared. Okay. We just did time factors eight, right? And I said if I had two times two times three, how could I write that in exponential notation? Two. Two squared times three. Correct? Yeah. Well, now I have inches times inches. I can't really do inches times inches, can I? No, so I write it as inches squared. That's showing it inches times inches. Does that make sense? Guys, here's why I'm making such a big point of this. You can do all of this work. You can get all of this right. And if this is missing, you just missed half the credit. Half. Half. That's still one. You have. Guys, you have to have the correct unit. Okay, here's why. And I didn't go look at this in last class, but now that we're in the area, I'm going to show you. Don't look the same. No. Why? That's one inch. It's one inch long. This is one inch by one inch. This is one square inch. Those look the same. Look nothing alike. So if I say that my answer is one inch, this is what I'm saying. If I say it's one square inch, this is what I'm saying. Is that a different thing? Yeah. So it's important to have the correct unit. Absolutely. It's a whole different concept. It's a whole different answer. When you put a square by the unit. Is that very clear on that? Whatever you use it. And if it's a bigger unit, guess what I use? Unit as the unit. Square. Times whatever the unit is, square. Okay? Guys, that is really important to have a completely different unit of what my answer is talking about. Okay? So that being said, now you guys have already done these two. So again, this is a parallelogram. So I know that my area is base times height. What's my base? Um, uh, five. Five. Well, I can put it right on my finger. What's my height? Three point five. Three point five. Put it right on your finger. Guys, if you're ready to your finger, then it should be really easy to put it in the formula. Now I'm just going back to my formula. Base is five centimeters. Height is three and five tenths centimeters. And now I just do the math. Three point five times five. You have to be one decimal. Twenty-five. <laughs> 15, 17, but one decimal. So my area is 17 and 5 tenths centimeters squared. Whoops. Huh? Okay. Anyone 
All right, so again, they're the same. We did not add to or take away from the area. We only rearranged it. Make sense? All right. 
right, number four, describe the relationship between the areas of the parallelogram and the rectangle since they have the same base and height. What do I know about the area? They have the same base and the same height. What does that mean? The area will be the same. Um, down, down, down. Area. All right, number five, use the term base and height to describe how to calculate the area of a parallelogram. So what is our formula for area of a parallelogram? We did that on our doodle notes today. Not just base and height. What do we do? Base times height. And that equals what? Area. Area with units Square. What's that? Yeah. No. What doesn't make sense? Somebody said no. Oh. Okay, what doesn't make sense? Would you rather ask Mr. Moore? No, no, no. What did she say? Guys, I don't know why you're yelling. We put units squared if we don't know if it's inches, feet, centimeters, meters. We always use units if we don't know what they are. And it's always squared. Got it? Yes, because that means time. Five. Guys, we're talking. All right, when you want to represent a quantity that varies or changes, you can use a variable. So I want you to get this vocabulary definition. A variable is a letter used to represent a number. So now we are going to alphabet into our math. You all live. The use of variables helps you write formulas and express relationships. To write formulas, sorry, write the formula to calculate the area of a parallelogram and a rectangle. We already did that. We used base for our B for our base and H for our height. I thought you said there was no alphabet in mathematics. Oh no, I said we only have alphabet in mathematics. We didn't even want to move a lot in like alphabet. We have four stops. Five. Next page, guys. Sorry, folks, I'm getting my extra time. Yeah. And our next one needs some explanation. I hand it on a small piece of paper to me. Okay? On that small piece of paper, please listen. Here's what's going to happen. So I'm going to show you. You won't be able to see it on the video because it's on top of the smart board. But here's what we're going to do. Take your paper. Put it directly over top of the shape. You're going to draw the shape, practically using a straight edge. I can't on the board. Okay? You're going to take your paper and you're going to flip it upside down. You're going to put those lines back together, just like this. And I'm going to then redraw the triangle again. And that's going to give you a shape. And label the base and the height once you have finished that. Okay. So, the shape, flip it upside down, put the lines together, and we can about four minutes ago. But what when I drew this triangle 
go again. Four, so I go one, two, three, four. It should have looked something like that. On this one, flip this one up. That one should have been easy because it's right angle. This would have been the most difficult of the three. Okay? So if I do this one and we draw it, now the base of two goes up here and it comes down to the point. Okay. Quick side note. Those of you with your highlighters fill out. When you're doing stuff like this, so you can use a straight edge. Straight edge of the tool used to draw the line. A lot of times we call it rulers. So not a straight edge. But if we weren't recording, I would. But you got to try to draw those lines straight. I can't on the board because if I put against the board, it's going to automatically draw. It also said label my base and my height. This should have been easy. There's my base. I don't have a right angle, so I need to make one, meaning that line would be my height. This one was easy. I have a base and a height. This is the most difficult. I need everybody to take close attention on this. Okay? Here's my base. How long is my base? It's only two. But to find a perpendicular line, I need to go all the way out to here to find my magic box, don't I? So I also have to extend, oops, sorry, extend this line over to get to the magic box. This part here is not part of my base. My base is still only too long. But once I get to that perpendicular line, now I can count this height is now five. I can now use my picture and count all of these. This base is four, this height is three. This base was five, and the height was four. Why is that important? Go to the next page, and here's where I gotta cut you guys a little short. Determine the area of each parallelogram. So for number one, I said the base was four and the height was three. So that's going to be 4 times 3, or 12 units squared. For base 2, that one was easy because we counted all of them. So that was 4 times 5, or 20 square units. For the third one, and here's the tricky one, I said the base was uh, base and height. I had a base of 2, height of 5, and 10 square units. Okay. Guys, here's why that last one was tricky. The first two should have been pretty simple. But remember, my base is only two. When I had to draw to the magic box, this is not actually part of the figure. That's only to tell me where that perpendicular line is. Okay? Now, if I look at those, how does the area of each triangle relate to the area of those parallelograms? Well, how many triangles did I draw for each of those? Two. So, if I had the area of the parallelogram, what would the area of that triangle be? So, the first one, parallelogram was a 12 units. So, what's the triangle going to be? Guys, this area, this whole thing, is 12. What's this part? Six. Six. Is that hard? Am I missing something? The second one, this whole thing was 20, so the triangle piece is going to be 10. So, here's our last piece, then you can go. What is our formula? One half the base times the height, or you can write two formulas on this. Base times height divided by two. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. 